Hi, welcome to Cube Conversations. I'm Stu Miniman here at the Wikibon Home Office in Marlboro, Massachusetts. Back from VMworld, uh, right in the middle of the fall 2015 tour, and happy to have back to the Cube Suresh Jastrasaria, uh, who's with the Dell product management team, focused on the software defined storage, hyperconvergence. Suresh, welcome back to the program. Thank you, Stu. Thanks Our, for inviting me. So you and I bumped into each other on the way to VMworld, and we said, hey, it would be really good to kind of get together, talk about what we learned at the show. Hyperconvergence, of course, was one of the biggest topics at the show, as well as really get an update, because last time you came here nine months ago, uh, it was the original GA of the Dell XC series, which is the Nutanix OEM. Got want to really dig into and unpack that piece of solution. But first of all, how, how was VMworld for you? Thanks for uh, inviting me again, and it was good to bump into you at, uh, at Logan. So uh, at, at VMworld, we had great reception uh, of our uh, technologies that we were showcasing uh, on, in the Dell booth as well as uh, in the Nutanix booth, uh, specifically the, uh, the hyperconvergence uh, platform, the Dell XC series. Um, there was a lot of interest from uh, you know, customers from all over the world as well as in uh, all industries. And um, one of the things that I noticed is that VMworld this year, there were so many uh, so many booths which were showing uh, storage related technologies so it, it felt to me that VMworld was all about uh, all about storage you know uh, as as opposed to uh, about virtualization you know yeah, yeah. Actually, I saw somebody had done a highlight of how many sponsors and how many booths there were talking about storage. And we know that storage has historically been, you know, the largest dollar amount when we talk about a virtualization environment. But hyperconvergence even was was even bigger. Last year, I think there were five or six booths I I had, I had counted that talked about hyperconvergence and just coming out of the woodworks. On the cube, uh, we did interviews with, uh, you know, VMware with what they're doing with Virtual SAN or vSAN. We had Nutanix on. Had some new startups like SpringPath on. Uh, and of course, you've got uh, you know Simplicity, Nimbox, you know a whole bunch of other startups in this space, uh, and hyperconverged backup from like Cohesity. Um, so many companies that are glomming on uh, to this uh, what we call server SAN uh, in the Wikibon community, and what uh, we, we typically call kind of the hyperconverged infrastructure. So definitely a hot topic. Uh, and you know, let, let's talk a little bit about kind of the market dynamic itself, Suresh. So you know, when we put out our first definition uh, now about a year and a half ago. Uh, you know, there, there were a lot of people that said, wow, these are some really important trends and we like what you've done, but uh, we were met with some skepticism as to how much of the market this was going to penetrate and how fast it was going to grow. Um, and it, it's kind of funny to me in, you know, a year and a half, everybody's coming up to us and talking to us even more because it, it's growing even faster than we predicted. You know, what, what, what have you been hearing across absolutely, the industry? Absolutely, absolutely, yeah. yeah, um, uh, Stu. You know, um, Wikibon, uh, had done uh, uh, some work about a year and a half ago on server SAN. And um, at that time, when we looked at the server SAN market, we, we saw that this was, uh, this was growing. But boy, we have seen that uh, whatever we keep on was saying about a year and a half ago has been corroborated now. This past summer, IDC as well as Gartner have come out with, uh, with the forecast for hyperconversion. Both of them are saying that this uh, hyperconverged market is growing at a 65% uh, north of 65% CAGR uh, in the next four or five years. And you know, l let me just give you my perspective as well as uh, you know, Dell's perspective as into where uh, uh, you know, this hyperconverged market is going. So every 10 to 12 years, uh, there is always a new technology that, that comes up and, and replatforming of the data center happens. We saw that in the 80s from mainframe to client server. In the 90s, we saw that uh, in terms of uh, you know software uh, and, and and servers and, and and internet and in the last decade we saw that in virtualization and and now we are seeing is that there is a replatforming of the of the data center that is happening uh, for for hyperconverged and, and and cloud you know and and this is where I think that the bigger opportunity is that hyperconvergence is is a, is, a, is a term right now. But the real story is about the replatforming of the data center that is happening, and, and that's where this technology, the Dell XC series, as well as the Nutanix technology is gonna play out, and we will see a lot more growth. In fact, uh, Gardner and IDC are now saying the same thing that you were saying, that in the next one to, to two years, this, this market is gonna grow 100% year, year over year. 
Okay, so Suresh, you bring up a lot of points there. I want to poke at the cloud bit because a lot of people, they don't kind of understand how cloud and the hyperconvergence goes together. Uh, so I'm wondering if you can kind of explain from a Dell standpoint how you think, and I, I know at Wikibon we've got some pretty strong held beliefs as to Absolutely. how this works. Absolutely. Let me, let me make it simple. Uh, you know, so a lot of people are interested in cloud, and, and what are the things that cloud offers? What cloud offers is uh, if you have a workload, uh, and if you have an elastic workload specifically, what cloud offers is you can start very quickly. You know, you can rent, swipe your credit card and, and, and rent the, uh, the IT infrastructure on the cloud. You can start very quickly. You can, you can grow very quickly because uh, you know, it, it allows you to scale up and down very quickly. So start very quickly and grow very quickly. If you can provide and these two characteristics for some of your workloads in the data center, right? You will see that there is an economics uh, that happens between uh, between elastic workload and and you know stationary workload, the workloads that are consistent every year, right? Because it's the same economics that happens uh, when you are trying to rent, buy, or lease, right? With real estate, the same economics is going to happen for those workloads which are static or, or, or constant and predictable. And, and what we are going to say, we are, we are seeing is that in the data center, most of the uh, customers who have this kind of workload, they're seeing that they can save a lot of money by going from the traditional IT where you have uh, you know, uh, server consolidated using virtualization, you have storage consolidated using, um, uh, using NAS or SAN, but that complexity of three-tier architecture is now you know, simplified in the hyper-converged architecture, and, and customers are seeing that they can save a lot of money by going to this in the, uh, in the predictable workloads, and for elastic workloads, this technology is providing the, uh, the elasticity to take the workload from on-premise to the public cloud using uh, things like containers. So this technology is, is, is ripe for replatforming the data centers over the next uh, five years. Yeah, and, and there's, there's a lot of pieces there and we don't have time to get into all of it, but uh, one, one of the things that we point out from Wikibon's server SAN research is just architecturally, if we look at the storage there, Look at the biggest cloud guys. They don't buy storage arrays. What they typically did is they, they created pools of resources that you know, sometimes compute and storage were separate, but you know, they buy lots of x86 servers uh, and they, they put storage as needed in there and they don't do storage as a separate, uh, you know, separate discipline. They, they focus on the application and they put it through. What uh, David Floyer calls this is the hyperscale server SAN. And some of those same lessons learned, or when Nutanix built their architectures, they took you know, the Google file system, they you know, looked at those architectures, and that was one of the underpinnings of how they built their software. So you know, we're seeing some of the same type of architectures that are in you know, Facebook, Google, and, and, and Amazon in these hyper-converged uh, you know, environments that are going to fit in the enterprise. And as, as you pointed out, it's simplicity that people need. They want flexibility. They don't want, I mean, the, the, the number one complaint we hear from storage people uh, you know, for the last decade has been, oh my God, you know, getting it in, spinning it up, moving it out, all of those migration uh, things that I had to do, those, those just kill me from an operational standpoint and the total, uh, the, the total cost of what I'm doing. Um, I, I, I thought it was really interesting actually that uh, EMC, who is you know, the, the, the leader in storage and you know, has a long history selling uh, storage area networks, uh, when they came out with their, uh, the, their new announcement with a product called Scale.io um, and they gave the Scale.io note and they quoted one of their customers that said just the, the cost of storage and the operational efficiencies was half the cost of what it would have been on the traditional environment. So if you see that kind of, you know, one of the leaders in uh, who, who drove and delivered uh, uh, storage area networks now, uh, explaining how, how much cheaper it is to go to this environment, uh, you know, th this trend is real and, you know, you're really going to see that this, this wave of everybody in the industry pushing, pushing for it. So, uh, and any kind of comments on that piece? Or? Absolutely. You know, I mean, uh, what I have seen in the past years, uh, last time when I was here, we had just announced the product in the past year, we have seen that, you know, we started out with, with one application, one workload, uh, VDI, which was, um, you know, um, quick to start, easy to consume, and the efficiency that, that it provided, uh, what was provided uh, with uh, the kind of cloud workloads provide. And 
most of the customers were latching on who were trying to do VDI were latching on to this uh, Dell XC series. But in the last you know, six to nine months, what we have seen is that other workloads are coming and um, server virtualization, private cloud, SQL. And, and I can see that big data and, and and uh, collaboration workloads uh, are, are ripe for picking for this uh, for this architecture. And in the next, uh, you know, year to two years, you, what you're going to see is that most of these other workloads that are with, that are consuming a large amount of uh, you know footprint in the in the data center are going to move to this uh, this architecture. And, and and Dell is ready for it. If you if you take a look at as to where we have been selling in the past uh, 12 months, uh, and and if it it is it is uh, Across all geographies, we see the uh, we see the uh, the adoption of Dell XC series across all geographies, across all verticals, and especially in the last quarter, you know we have seen exactly the revenue uh, jump, you know, multiple folds. You know, yeah. so Suresh, we're actually showing the slide that that you, that you brought, uh, showing kind of the worldwide adoption of the Dell XC series. So first of all, congratulations. This looks you know, great ge geographical spread. I'm guessing the, the larger uh, purple dots are the ones where you're doing more revenue and, or more deals. Uh, is that the case? Uh, well, definitely. You know, I mean, uh, as, as you can see, early adopters are, uh, especially in the, in the, in the Western, uh, Western Hemisphere, in the Western world, in the US, in, uh, in Western Europe, as well as in Australia. But Japan, Korea, South America, uh, India, they're all kicking in uh, and, and coming to the Dell XC series. Are, are there any specific stats you can say, number of customers, you know, revenue growth, or how many countries you're in? Well, um, we are uh, now uh, offering Dell XC series uh, worldwide. Everywhere we offer servers, uh, Dell XC series is available. And, uh, you know, the number of customer growth has, uh, um, uh, is now, uh, is now in, in terms of a couple thousand now, you know, customers uh, who have adopted this technology. And, uh, you know, the growth of revenue is, um, as I said, it's multiple fold from uh, last quarter to, uh, the previous quarter to last quarter is multiple fold. And uh, if you take a look at the, the market forecast that uh, Gardner and, um, uh, and IDC are, are saying, the overall market for XC uh, hyperconverged this, this year is gonna be about a billion dollars. So, if you subtract out as to you know who are the market readers and and, and where we are going, you will see that uh, we are uh, tracking to to that market growth uh, and, and and we are taking a bigger chunk of the market share. In fact, yeah. so Suresh, I'm wondering if you can give us a little color. I think what what something that people really underestimate is how it, t it takes kind of not only the customer to adopt this, but the channel to understand how to position this and how to put in the environment. It's something we saw both in the original converged infrastructures, things like FlexPod and vBlock, through the hyperconverged is it's, it's not, you know, oh, hey, let's just pull out, you know, your storage and put in this new thing because it's, wait, is it, is it storage? Is it compute? How do I put it together? What budget? Who owns it? Um, you know, that takes a little bit of time to help position it. So, you know, what have you seen and why is Dell starting to see, you know, the, the, the growth, you know, increasing at such a great rate? You know, a very good, uh, very good question, uh, Stu. As I explained earlier, you know, the, the market always, uh, 10 to 12 years, every 10 to 12 years, the market presents itself with this opportunity. And, and, and this decade uh, is going to be for hyperconvergence, and it's, uh, it's becoming more and more clear. And, and people who, who see the trend, the, the channel partners, uh, the customers who see the trend, they always, and, and the vendors as well, who see this trend, they can see how to make money in this. They have done it in the past, when, when we went from mainframe to, uh, to client server, to, to internet, to now it's the software defined. And, and they will find out the ways that they can save the money and they can make the money in, uh, in, in selling this technology. Because, you know, as, as, as proven by uh, one of your white papers that we did with you, as well as uh, with the, um, there are uh, evidence that we have from our existing customers, um, and, and we are coming out with all these stories now that the the total cost of ownership on this uh, on this product line is uh, the ROI is almost 510 percent over five years, and uh, it, it pays back itself within within seven months to to a year and a half. Yeah. Do, do you have any specific case studies you can share with us? Absolutely. Uh, uh, Williams F1 is one of the uh, one of the customers in the UK. They are in the motorsport business. They started out with uh, with a with a clear problem statement that 
their data sets were, was growing because they were capturing more and more data from more and more uh, points on, on their car. And they wanted to make sure that they can make decisions uh, in quick time frame based on the larger data sets. The other technologies, the, the three-tier technologies like SAN and NAS that they were having, they could not make it work with that. And, and when they started looking at the Dell XC series um, and the Nutanix technology, they, they could uh, use this technology to save uh, uh, a lot of money, first of all, because uh, uh, they could transport, the, their footprint was much smaller, so whenever they would go to a race, they have to carry less equipment, and as a result, they were saving almost $150,000 per trip. And, and secondly, uh, in terms of uh, you know, using the larger data sets and making the decisions quickly, they were able to you know, bring in all the larger data sets and, and make the decision that they wanted to make uh, from uh, three minutes, it, it came down to a few seconds. So that's the kind of transformation that they saw. And we are seeing that this is the kind of transformation that is happening not only in one industry, but multiple industries across uh, uh, geographies. Yeah, we love that. What a, a great example of a customer that understands the value of going fast, right? Absolutely. <laughs> with, with the F1. So, uh, yeah, and, and leveraging data is a huge theme that, that we've seen, uh, you know, not just saving costs, but uh, taking information, allowing us to transform our business. So, uh, all right, so, so VMworld's in the rear, rear view mirror. We've got Dell World uh, coming up in a couple of weeks. Um, anything you share as to what to expect from Dell World and, and really Dell and the XC series through the Absolutely. rest of the year? Absolutely. You're going to see an exciting uh, um, uh, exciting show of, of uh, Dell XC series at Dell World. You know, we started out, we saw this trend back in uh, 2013. We started out, um, you know, understanding as to who the players are, which software we can, uh, we were the early adopters in terms of vendors uh, to come out with this technology, one of the larger vendors. We partnered with uh, Nutanix in 2014 and we announced it about a year ago uh, at Dell World. Uh, since then, we have we have come um, a long way. We, we announced the 12G platform, we announced the 13G platform, and now we have a GPU node as well as a short depth node that is coming out, and you will be able to see both of those, as well as uh, we have uh, announced our uh, four node 2U appliance that is coming out for uh, you know, larger data centers as well as uh, service providers, and you'll be able to see that so, at, at Dell World. So we have completely, um, you know, done a, an overall of our, uh, our appliances. And going forward, in the last 12 months, we were, uh, we were focused on getting uh, our customers the appliances, but now in the next 12 months, what you're gonna see is that the focus on uh, integrating it with the Dell ecosystem, the Dell iDRAC that we have, that makes the management of servers much easier, uh, the Dell's uh, uh, technologies for open manage uh, essentials, uh, so integrating uh, the iDRAC chip with the PRISM software uh, that Nutanix has, as well as uh, with, the, uh, with the Acropolis software that Nutanix has, is going to bring the value that these customers, uh, and you will see all of that at Dell World. All right, well, Suresh, really appreciate you coming to the office here. Looking forward to Dell World. Uh, of course, uh, be, be sure to check out all the video uh, from Dell World on siliconangle.tv and lots more on hyperconvergence, what Wikibon dubs server SAN can be found on wikibon.com. Thank you for joining us for this segment of Cube Conversations. Thank you.